Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies and today we're going to look at the Drive XL. The Drive XL is a mid-year release for 2019 for PSE. Now the Drive bow is a 31 inch axle axle bow and it's one of the most popular bows produced. And what makes it so popular is it's got a high performance at a budget price. So it's a step up in price from the beginner bow but it's got all that extra speed and functionality that you'd expect in a top end bow at a low end price. What PSC has done mid-year, as I've said, what we want to do with the drive is we want to make the bow a little bit longer. And what the drive XL is, is extra long. That's what the XL stands for. Now the draw length on this bow goes from 26.5 to 32 inches in draw length. So for a person who's six and a half foot tall, this bow is going to be suitable. There's not that many bows which will go to 32 inches. Now the 33 inch axle axle size means this bow is a little bit more forgiving to shoot than the normal drive and the drive normally shoots well. Now you're going to say why is this bow more forgiving to shoot than a 31 inch and that's a good question and I really don't have much of an answer to that. What happens when the bow becomes shorter in size the peak becomes further away from your eye because the angle becomes more acute and I think what happens as the bow becomes longer because things are not as acute things are not as critical as far as timing is concerned the setup becomes more forgiving as the bow becomes longer. So I can shoot very well with the 31 inch bow, but I really struggle with the 28 inch bows. But my target bows tend to be around 38 or 40 inches, and I find very little difference between 38 and a 40 inch target bow, very little difference at all. Now with the Drive XL, 31 inches, 31 to 33 inches, to me this is a better 3D bow, a little bit more forgiving and I like the whole concept of this. But it does raise for me some questions and the questions are going to be first off, is when I normally sold the Bow Madness Unleashed, which is a 33 inch bow, I would, my, my marketing to that bow was a, it was a step up in price from the drive. And I said well for the for the extra dollars you're getting a bow which is a little bit more forgiving to shoot because it's a little bit longer axle axle well now you get this bow the drive xl at the same price as the drive so now for me the bow madness the bow madness which is stepping up in price i kind of struggle to see where that fits into the market compared to this bow because it's got the same features it's got the same cams same limbs basically the same riser so i'm going to struggle to see where that fits into the market compared to the drive so let's have a look at this bow. It's featured with the twin cam, twin cams. Now this is a 3B cam system and what that stands for is a third binary. So a three track binary. So you have one track here, one track here and then another track here. So three positions on the cam. One, two, three on the outer. Now there's some binary cam systems are twin track, so when it feeds in it feeds off on the same track, so that's a twin binary cam. Now the big question is going to be what's the difference between a hybrid cam, twin cam, the evolved cam system, what's all this mean? I don't know the difference. But let's get the things out of the way first. The speed wise is pretty much the same between a hybrid or twin cam. With a twin cam bow like this, the cams need to be in time as you're pulling it back. And what that means is this wheel and this wheel need to draw back at the same time. If they draw back at different times, what you're going to feel when you pull it back is you're going to feel it go lump. It's going to become lumpy. So it's going to, it's going to as you pull it back, instead of being smooth, it's going to um, lump when this one hits the valley. And then it's going to lump again when this one hits the valley. They need to hit the valley at the same time. And also the draw stop. So you've got a little draw step stops here on the cam. This is where the cable hits the string. These have got to hit at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to get a rocking motion as you're pulling this bow back. So to time these bows, if they're not timed from the factory, or let's say you've replaced your strings, all you do is you twist up these strings and cables. You don't twist up the strings, sorry, you twist up the cables here to increase or decrease the travel on a top cam. Now I did one the other day, um, it was an Evolve, it was about seven twists I had to do on it. Um, and it took me probably 30 minutes to 40 minutes to time the bow to get them exactly in sync, pull back at the same time using a draw board, half a twist and a twist on. So it does take time to fit a, fit a set of strings to a bow and get them perfectly timed. Now the big question you're going to ask is 
well, cam lean. I get asked a lot about cam lean and what PSE do is each limb is a different poundage. So basically this cam should be straight up and down. Now if you want to check that, all you do is you put an arrow along it. Now you can't do it on this side here because you can see it lumps out here. But you can go like that and you can kind of see if things track. And I'm going to just exaggerate it. But I think from there, you can see it tracks pretty well. You can do it on the back of the cam. And you can see here that the arrow is tracking straight down that string line. Now, in the past, when binary cams first came out, and back in the old days when I used to shoot, back when kids were kids, 40 years ago, we didn't have this technology where limbs were different poundages and cams would basically tilt when you pull it back. Now, is it going to make much difference to your shooting? The answer is no, it's not going to make much difference to your shooting because it's going to be the same every single time. Now, you're going to say, well, can I tune my bow? Well, this is one thing. So if you want to remove cam lean, if you've got cam lean, you can, you can move this cam left or right. In fact, on the Matthews bows, you've, they've got a top hat system which you basically change the thickness. Now, on my PSE Perform bow, it's literally a paper, the thickness of paper to, to change the tear on, a, on the bow. So literally just changing one piece of paper, thickness, the module, the washer from one side to the other to get to remove tear. It was so minor, it was just crazy. But that's what you can do with these bows. You can shim them left or right. But most times you should never have to touch it. And most times don't touch it because it's, it's fine straight out of the factory. Now, if you're having trouble timing your bow as far as tuning your bow, it could be torque, hand grip here. So always check, get someone else to shoot the bow first before you start moving cams around because moving cams is going to take time to do. Always check to make sure the RS is dead in the center of the hand grip. Um, and the arrows on the string at 90 degrees. So this, the drive has got various positions here where you can fit the sight to the bow. It's a standard cable guard. So on the more expensive PSEs like the Evolve, which are about $1,300, they've got a flexible cable guard. So as you pull back the bow, the cable guard flexes in. Is that a problem? Not really, this works fine. Plastic cable guard. The more expensive bows, the $1,300 ones will have a roller guard. Is it a, will it make any difference? No, it won't. Plastic limb pockets. As soon as you go up to the Evolves, the Evokes, you're talking metal limb pockets, but you're talking about $1,300 versus a $700 bow. Now, this bow to change the draw length is a rotating module. So currently this bow is set on G. You can see there, a little G. Now the A letter is the longest and the L letter being the shortest. And you've got two screws, you do not need a bow press to, to adjust this. It's two screws, rotate the module top and bottom, set them the same, and that's it. On the more expensive um, PSE bows, you can change the let off as well as the draw length. On the drive, you cannot. You can see it's fixed into the um, cam itself. The more expensive PSEs, like the Evokes, have a yoke system here to balance the limbs as well in the cam. But to me, it's not that much of a it's not that much of an issue. Um, you've got spots here to fit a lower lower stabilizer if you want. You've got spots here to fit bow quiver, two-piece bow quiver. This bow comes in mossy oak, cryptic camo or black. It comes in 60 or 70 pound. Um, the first thing when I picked this bow up is I felt the weight of this bow and this felt extremely light for a 33 inch bow. So what I did is I grabbed a set of scales and I put it on the D-loop and I measured it. Now my scales may not be accurate, okay? They're just the bow scales from the shop and they weigh 3.4 pounds. PSE released the stats on this bow at 3.8 pound. But my bow scales, when I do it for most bows, they come in actually, the bows are actually heavier than spec. This bow came in lighter than spec and it felt light, lighter than spec. It feels like a very, very light bow. String stop. Um, to me, it looks nice. The grip is pretty standard. It feels like a bow madness. It feels like a drive, but longer. Um, let's try the draw cycle. This bow is set on 60 pounds at 29 inches. So 
So to start, start with the speed on this bow is 325 which is not a fast bow but it's it's acceptable i think it's a little bit slow on the drive seven inch brace height so it starts off here fairly solid but not like you can't budget or anything it's it just starts off solid it's not and it feels all through that draw cycle there it feels like exactly the same poundage so you don't feel a build up some bows start off really sloppy and they gradually build up this feels like the same poundage all the way through. Right, now it's starting to drop off here. It's dropping off, dropping off, dropping off, dropping off, drop, dropping. Now I've got the 85% let off. I'm just gonna let this down. I've almost got to push it to let it down. Actually, I might shoot the shot. At 85% let off, this is a 60 pound bow. Feels like 90% let off. The let off is so gradual, you know, it's kind of starting to drop off here and it's got a big valley. So it's, it's holding its weight, then gradually dropping off. Very easy bow to shoot. But then when you want to let this bow down, you're like, you feel like you got to push it because the let off is that great. I mean, you must be holding six pounds. There's literally nothing when you get back there. The bow was quiet to shoot. You can see there's no vibration in the shot. Um, how does this draw cycle rate to me? The valley is one of the better ones. Um, so when it comes to drawing back any bow, is, is as easy as any bow I've ever drawn. At 60 pounds, there's no pressure on my shoulders. It doesn't hurt. Easy, just easy. This is. And at 325, it should be easy because it's not a speed machine. It's not the 360 bows where you kind of know valleys. It's hard to shoot, hard to draw back. This bow is easy. So I think on the I think it's on the speed test though. I think this will actually perform quite well. So I've got a chronograph here. We're going to shoot it through a chronograph. Okay. So the arrows I shoot for my speed tests are gold tip velocities. These are 400s with a 90 grain point. I think they're 327 or 324 grains. Now the fast bows are shooting 300 feet per second. Uh, I think the fastest I've shot has been about about 320 um, at my draw length and my poundage. Um, I'll be interested to see what this shoots. I'll be predicting about 295 um, because it does have that big valley. It's got a big valley, so that's going to cost it a little bit of speed. Seven inch brace height is going to cost it a little bit of speed, but it's going to be easier to shoot. Now you're going to say why is a 7 inch brace height easier to shoot than a 6 inch? Because what you're doing here is you're moving the point of the limbs and the point of the hand grip out further. So basically when you're aiming, it's still a 29 inch draw length, but when you're aiming you get less, less of this stuff happening. The bow feels more stable when you shoot. When you've got the short inch, like 5 inch brace heights, you, the bow tends to be a bit twitchier. I find. You can still shoot good with a short brace height, but I just find it easier to shoot with a 7. Now technically speaking, the 7 inch brace height gets off the string quicker than a 6 inch brace height, because a 6 inch brace height, the arrow's still got that far to, to travel, so mechanically it's better, it's better to shoot a bow with a bigger brace height as far as accuracy, because if you drop your arm and make a movement, be less, be less, you'll see less of that movement. But I just find the bow's more stable at seven inches. You can just, I'll just shoot another shot. You can just feel it's the aiming. I think this bow will aim really, really well. Two eighty-eight. The bow doesn't, it's not doing any of that, it's just sitting there in your hand, it's just easy. And that's what I find with all 7 inch brace height bows, I just find them very easy to shoot. So I'm going to predict I'm going to shoot this bow quite well at 18 metres. So let's go back now and see how well I shoot it. The early drive bows were hybrid cams. 
So you had a different cam top and bottom. And they didn't allow you to adjust the draw, draw poundage very much. So they used to be adjustable from like 50 to 60. The new drives for 2019 and I think 2018 allow you to adjust the both 13 turns on limb bolts. And with the drive, the normal drive, that was about 30 plus pounds of adjustment. I'm not sure what this, this is as far as poundage adjustment. It does enable you to, to wind the bow down 13 turns, which is amazing. So a 60 pound bow, I'm gonna guess you'll get down around 40. Now the arrows, these are the standard arrows I shoot for my competition. These are Victory VAPs, 140 grain points, 340 spine. Now, I've got lots of birds in the trees. Um, that, the shot just aimed dead in the center of the tent, didn't move. I don't know where it went, but it aims really, really easy. Now the lightness of this bow means it's suitable for beginners, obviously, because the bow is so light. Now if you're an experienced archer, or let's say you're a hunter, that means you can add a bow quiver on. You can add a bow quiver on and this bow still is gonna be light to shoot. You can add a stabilizer and it's still gonna be under the weight of most bows you're gonna buy. Now as far as cam lean, I can look at the top and the top's perfect. The bottom I cannot see when I draw the bow back just because of the symmetrics of it. Um, but like I said, I check the cam lean on the back of the cam. I don't really worry much about stuff when I shoot. I worry more about myself, my personal shooting. In fact, I saw a guy who was shooting um, a Redding, a big shoot in, in America, and he dropped his bow down a cliff or something, and the limbs all cracked on the outside here, and they were splintered. And I think he said he still came in third, so he could shoot the, like the limbs were just smashed. Kept shooting the bow, fine, with the <laughs> limbs all being splintered. Um, and when I say splintered, I mean, I wouldn't have shot it, but he obviously did. And um, so I'm going to say, you know, it gets back to the archer. Like this bow is lovely to shoot. How do I rate this bow overall as far as all bows I've shot? This is a real, like it's a budget bow, but it's really, really nice. I like the drive and I shot really well with the drive, but to me it was a little bit short, 31 inches axle axle. I prefer the 33. And what PSE have done with this bow, they made the bow really, really nice. I don't think it's fancy. It's not the, it's not your fancy bow with the cage riser. It's, this is a meat and potato bow that is just, it's great budget, shoots well. Easy to shoot. Like you're gonna buy this, if you buy this bow and you learn to shoot, you're gonna take this down to an archery club and beat people who've got bows three times the price. Absolutely guarantee it. Absolutely guarantee it. And you're gonna say, well, why is this bow so good? It's got the compression limbs, which is standard on all PSEs. And what this does, it pulls the limbs down, puts more tension on the strings and cables, makes the bow quieter, makes it perform better. This bow is just, like the flexible cable, cable guard, the roll slide, you don't need any of that stuff. It doesn't really do anything. Um, and I'm 
kind of unselling you the, the more expensive bows. The whole purpose of a flexible cable slide, so it pulls it in, is to reduce torque on the strings and cables, but this bow's been designed to have that torque. So it's, it's never been a problem before. I've watched videos of people back in 1983, 1984, shooting amazing scores with these old bows, and this far, bow far exceeds any bow built in 1984. So I get asked today, can I shoot a compound without a scope? And the answer is absolutely, definitely yes. Like I'm just shooting now with a, like a five pin sight, there's no bubble, no peep sight, you don't need a peep sight. All those things just help you a little bit. It gets back to basics, you've got to shoot well, you've got to good, do a good shot, you've got to be consistent in yourself. Okay, let's go down and see how that how that how those arrows are. It felt good, absolutely felt fantastic to shoot. Okay, so I'm down here at the target, that was 18 meters, so I shot 1.8. Right, the rest are golds. Look, that's not a bad group, I'm pretty happy with that. And there's no, like I said, it's a one pin sight, no peep sight, whisker biscuit arrow rest. Look. I shot the club championships today, and it's overcast here in Adelaide um, with a focus. And I shot really, really well. I shot 298 out of 300 indoor score at 25 meters. Um, I shot two nines, which were actually really close to the 10. Like they were like line cutters. So, but I haven't been practicing enough. And when I see this, like I am more than happy with that group. Absolutely more than happy. I've probably shot better groups in other videos I've, I've done, but I haven't been shooting as much as I have been lately. But I'm, this bow to me feels great. It feels as good as any other bow I've shot ever, period. The draw cycle's excellent. The weight is excellent, it's nice and light. The balance is perfect. It just sits there in your hand. Um, you can see it's a little bit back heavy, um, but it felt nice to shoot. Oh, it's a little bit back heavy, but when I shoot, I'm not sure why it's not coming backwards. I'm not sure why it's not coming back, but it didn't. It just sat there in my hand. It felt good. The draw cycle felt good. The adjustment felt good. Um, the let off. The adjustability of this bow is excellent. 26 to 32, which means you can sell this bow to anyone if you want to upgrade. Um, so what would things I would like to see in the Drive XL? Things I'd like to see improved or changed. Um, I would like to see this bow in colors. I would like to see a 50 pound model because I think uh, for ladies, kids, this bow would be ideal. Um, I'd obviously, I love seeing bows in colors because that just means for like Europe, England, obviously Australia where you sell lots of target bows. A lot of people don't hunt. Um, I know America's big hunting, but a lot of people don't hunt. They're just recreational shooters. So I sell as many black bows as I do camo. Um, so I, I always think colored bows are good. So I'd like to see colors. I'd like to see this bow in a 50 pound version. And I'd also like to see how far this bow can wind down in poundage. But overall, I think it's great. Um, these things in the past, I haven't been wrapped in in PSE. I don't know if they're any better now, but they did move in the past. Um, rip them off if they move. Um, it won't affect your shooting. Um, but overall, this is a great bow, nice finish. Price point, it's great. PSE just back you as far as if you have a problem, it's just fixed. So overall, I think this is fantastic. My only concern for me to shoot a bow like this is price point. It's so cheap. And as a shop owner, you should be shooting the more expensive model. And to me, this bow feels great. It feels, it feels really, really good. 
I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies, the Drive XL. Go and check it out in your local archery shop and see what you think and drop a little note below if you think it's as good as you think as I think this bow is. I really think it's good. Thanks for watching. Bye.